Hi everyone and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for Free with Miss Estrick. Today's session is going to be on DNA replication and if you haven't already subscribed then click below to subscribe as there's going to be lots of new videos coming up in the next month and after that to help prepare you for your mock exams and the summer exams. So get yourself some paper and um, a pen to make any notes as you go through. So DNA replication, this is what occurs within the cell cycle before cell division, which would either be mitosis or meiosis. So this is happening in interphase of the cell cycle, in particular the S phase, the synthesis phase. And it has to happen because DNA needs to replicate so that the new cell that is created also has a full copy of the DNA. The way that DNA replicates is described as being semi-conservative. And what that means is, in the daughter DNA, one strand is from the parental DNA, and one strand is newly synthesized. So daughter DNA is the DNA that you create. Parental DNA is the original DNA. So what this is saying is, within the DNA that has just been made, one strand is original, one strand is newly synthesized. So let's have a look then at how this occurs. We've got a summary diagram here. We're gonna go through it step by step, but first I just wanna point out some key elements which explain the process. Firstly is the idea of complementary base pairs, which you would have come across before when looking at the DNA structure at GCSE and A-level. The four nitrogenous bases are adenine, cytosine, guanine, thymine, but adenine will only bond with thymine Cytosine will only bond or pair with guanine. So those are our complementary base pairs. This is really important in DNA replication because it enables identical copies of DNA to be created and it helps to reduce copying errors which would result in mutations. There's two key enzymes that we're going to look at which are involved in this process as well. DNA helicase and DNA polymerase but their exact functions will come to later on. So step one, um, I just wanna point out some of the terminology again. So we mentioned earlier parental DNA, that's the name given to the original DNA. So at the very beginning, this is our parental DNA. And at the start, so step one, the first enzyme, DNA helicase, that is going to break all of the hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases, which are facing opposite each other on the two strands of the parental DNA. So it breaks those bonds and that causes the double helix to unwind and the two strands to separate, which we can start to see occurring here at the bottom. So step two, once those two strands are separated, each of those strands will then act as a template. And that template is to enable complementary DNA nucleotides within the nucleus, just floating around, to align opposite their complementary base pairs. And this is possible, again, because of that complementary base pairing rule. They aren't joined together, though, yet to make a polymer. We can just see we've got one single nucleotide here, but it's just attached or opposite its complementary base. And we've got another nucleotide here, which has the base cytosine, opposite its complementary base guanine, but those two nucleotides are not joined together yet. So they're still monomers. We haven't made that polynucleotide chain to make our new DNA polymer. And that's the next step, joining together these adjacent nucleotides. And this is via a condensation reaction. So that condensation reaction will remove a water molecule to then form a bond, which is the phosphodiester bond, which you would have learnt about in the DNA structure content. And that is completed by or catalyzed by DNA polymerase. So if you are asked what is the function of DNA polymerase, it's to join together adjacent nucleotides. And the way to remember which way round that is, DNA polymerase, so enzymes end ASE, and the start part often names what it does. So DNA polymer, that is what this enzyme does. It creates the DNA polymer. So lastly then, we've now got our two sets of daughter DNA. So that's 
Parental DNA has been split in half. We've got one of the original strands in this um, piece of daughter DNA and the others over here and we have two newly synthesized strands and that links us back to what we said the definition is of semi-conservative replication. So when DNA is replicated the new DNA has one of the original strands and one completely newly synthesized strands in the DNA. So just to summarise then, we've said DNA replication is semi-conservative, meaning one of the original strands is conserved and the other strand is made up of newly synthesised DNA. The process is split into these key steps. First of all, DNA helicase breaks the hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases of the two strands. That causes the double helix to unwind and it separates the two strands so they both act as a template. Then we have free floating DNA nucleotides within the nucleus will be attracted to the complementary bases which are exposed on the template strands. And finally, we need to join those nucleotides together. And that is the role of DNA polymerase that will catalyze the condensation reactions to create those phosphodiester bonds, which will then create our new polynucleotide chain. So that's it for DNA replication. If you want to try some practice questions to test your knowledge, then head on over to MissEstrick.com and um, click at the top here for the card on the Meselson and Stahl experiment, which is the next video, which shows how the semi-conservative replication um, process was proved. So if you have found this helpful, then be sure to give it a thumbs up below.